Hello, Jeff Zwerink here. Welcome to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas to help you be more convinced in the truth of Christianity. And today we're joined by a uh, colleague, friend, and president of Reasons to Believe, Dr. Hugh Ross, and we're going to discuss some new evidence for a cosmic inflation event. Hugh, it's good to have you here today. Well, thank you for inviting me, Jeff. So it seems like there's a lot of stuff about cosmology that's just kind of settled and done. I mean, you know, we live in a universe that's expanding, uh, cosmic microwave backgrounds out there, universe is on the order of 14 billion years old. What is it that's new that lends insight into this discussion? Well, what's new is we're now measuring the polarization features of the cosmic microwave background radiation uh, to a higher precision. And that's giving us insights into the Big Bang creation model that we didn't have before. Okay, so, so we've got this cosmic microwave background radiation that's left over from the early moments of the universe when it's incredibly hot and dense, uh, pervasive throughout the, throughout the universe, same in every direction, minor fluctuations. So when you talk about polarization and other things we're finding, what is it that they're measuring in the cosmic microwave background that's giving us this new insight? Well, they're able to measure something called the scalar spectral index. That's basically looking at very tiny differences in the polarization of the temperature differences in the cosmic microwave background radiation. And the value that they get tells them whether or not there is an early inflation event in the history of the universe. And if so, uh, roughly what kind of inflation event took place. And what's new is that uh, this measurement from the Atacama Cosmology Telescope in Chile, combined with other measurements of the polarization of the cosmic microwave background, for the first time uh, establishes that an inflation event did happen. Now, before it was at the point where we were saying, well, we got very strong evidence, uh, but now the evidence is very compelling. Okay, so let's let's explore this new telescope because most of the, the CMB measurements we're doing are from space. How are they able to make good measurements from the ground and, uh, and what is it that they're actually being able to, or how do they compete with these other telescopes? Well, they compete because they can put a lot more observing time towards it. That's especially important to get a good polarization measurement out. And so they found two places where they can be competitive with the space telescopes. One is at the South Pole, and one is at a high altitude dry desert site in Chile. In both cases, the goal is to observe in places where there's very little water vapor in the atmosphere. If there's almost no water vapor in the atmosphere, and you don't get much atmospheric disturbance at the wavelength that's crucial, which is millimeter wavelengths. And so, so yes, it's, it's the measurements from the South Pole and Chile that are giving us these new insights. So presumably, so the, so the idea is you're, you're in a place, being out in space, there's no water vapor to absorb the wavelengths, but if you can find those few places on earth where you don't have any water vapor, you can actually get as good a resolution. And so that's what they've done there in Atacama. Correct, correct. So what are some of the big findings that have come out of this telescope, just in general features? Well, they've been able to come up with the most precise date for the age of the universe. Uh, they're now saying 13.791 billion years, plus or minus 0 0.021 billion. That's about twice as accurate as what we had a year ago. Uh, so that's a significant point. Uh, and as I mentioned, they're now able to measure the scalar spectral index to high precision, which tells us definitively uh, that there is an early uh, inflationary event in the universe. That's a cornerstone of Big Bang creation models that permit the existence of physical life. Uh, so that's a really uh, important breakthrough. And now they actually have a measurement of the scalar spectral index that's sufficiently accurate uh, that it's at the point of ruling out a simple inflation model and looking at the more complex inflation models. So that's comforting realizing we've gone from simply saying it looks like there has to be an inflation event based on these measurements to where we're now actually identifying what kind of cosmic inflation event occurred. 
So when you say it rules out the simple ones, it means it's more complex. What does that mean? How does that cash out in terms of what it looks like in the universe? Well, probably means there's more than one constant that's uh, governing the inflation or more than one factor. I mean, what the inflation event happens uh, when the strong nuclear force separates out from the electroweak force, when the universe is about 10 to the minus 35 uh, seconds old. And there's a variety of way that separation can impact what's called symmetry breaking. And you got simple symmetry breaking and more complicated symmetry breaking. It looks like it's more complicated, which tells me as a Christian, there actually may be uh, more than one design feature that's involved in this to make the universe habitable for advanced life. So one of the features of inflation is that it produces a geometry for the universe that is very flat. Uh, I know that the Atacama Cosmology Telescope made a measurement of this parameter. Does it, does it say we're flat like all the previous measurements? It does, and uh, so that, that's a nice consistency check. Uh, the fact that we have the scalar spectral index telling us there's an inflation event. We know if there's an inflation event that's gonna make the universe uh, flat to a very high degree of measurement. And indeed, the Atacama teles Cosmology Telescope is indeed measuring a flat geometry to better than three places of the decimal. Okay, so the Atacama Cosmology Telescope tells us that the universe is 13.8 billion years old, very similar to Planck, very similar to WMAP, uh, gives a flat geometry, uh, now taken with uh, Planck and uh, WMAP, establishes that the scalar index is not simple inflation. How does that relate to what scripture says? Why is that uh, important for Christians to know? Well, now, long before astronomers realized that we live in a universe with constant laws of physics, that it's expanding, that there's a beginning to space and time uh, that is dominated by thermodynamics, hence is a universe that gets colder and colder. I like to tell people it wasn't George Lemaitre uh, or Edwin Hubble that discovered the Big Bang universe. Several Bible authors upstaged them by a couple of thousand years. And so coming up with more evidence for a Big Bang creation event does indeed establish that the Bible is always taught. As I've documented in the fingerprint of God, when this was first becoming to be scientifically uh, demonstrated, there was strong reaction from astronomers who didn't like Christianity, who didn't want the Bible to be established to be true. So that kind of is, uh, confirms that indeed, uh, Big Bang cosmology is a biblical concept. Well, thanks, Hugh. I appreciate your comments. You know, it, it really is fascinating that with science, we can actually investigate how this universe behaves. And the Bible talks about how this universe behaves. And what's fascinating is that as we probe and understand more and more scientifically how the universe behaves, it aligns with the biblical description. And that gives us great confidence that what the Bible has to say is true, not only about creation, but what it has to say about its creator. You know, I would encourage you to go to reasons.org and check out Hugh's latest blog on this topic. It's called New Telescope Observations Provide Cosmic Creation Confirmations. This will help equip you to know how to understand this important topic and how to use it to go out and share the gospel with those that God brings across your path.